Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This story takes us back to the green forest. When the merry little breezes arrive in the green meadows, they can't wait to tell everyone they saw a stranger in the green forest. The first animal they meet is Reddy Fox, and he pretends he already knew about the stranger so he can sneak into the forest and discover the stranger on his own. The Stranger in the Green Forest Old Mother West Wind, hurrying down from the purple hills with her merry little breezes, discovered the newcomer in the green forest on the edge of the green meadows. Of course, the Merry Little Breezes saw him too, and as soon as Old Mother West Wind had turned them loose on the green meadows, they started out to spread the news. As they hurried along the crooked little path up the hill, they met Reddy Fox. Oh, Reddy Fox, cried the Merry Little Breezes, so excited that they all talked together. There's a stranger in the green forest. Reddy Fox sat down and grinned at the Merry Little Breezes. The grin of Reddy Fox is not pleasant. It irritates and exasperates. It made the Merry Little Breezes feel very uncomfortable. You don't say so, drawled Reddy Fox. Do you mean to say that you've just discovered him? Why, your news is so old that it is stale. It is no news at all. I thought you had something really new to tell me. The merry little breezes were disappointed. Their faces fell. They had thought it would be such fun to carry the news through the green forest and over the green meadows. And now, the very first one they met knew all about it. Who is he, Reddy Fox? asked one of the Merry Little Breezes. Reddy Fox pretended not to hear. I must be going, he said, rising and stretching. I have an engagement with Billy Mink down at the Smiling Pool. Reddy Fox started down the crooked little path while the merry little breezes hurried up the crooked little path to tell the news to Jimmy Skunk, who was looking for beetles for his breakfast. Now, Reddy Fox had not told the truth. He had known nothing of the stranger in the green forest. In fact, He had been as surprised as the Merry Little Breezes could have wished, but he would not show it. And he had told another lie, for he had no intention of going down to the Smiling Pool. No, indeed. He just waited until the Merry Little Breezes were out of sight. Then he slipped into the green forest to look for the stranger seen by the Merry Little Breezes. Now, Reddy Fox does nothing openly. Instead of walking through the green forest like a gentleman, he snuck along under the bushes and crept from tree to tree, all the time looking for the stranger that the Merry Little Breezes had told him about. All around through the green forest snuck Reddy Fox, but nothing of the stranger could he see. It didn't occur to him to look anywhere but on the ground. I don't believe there is a stranger here, said Reddy to himself. Just then, he noticed some scraps of bark around the foot of a tall maple tree. Looking up to see where it came from, he saw, what do you think? Why, the stranger who had come to the green forest. Reddy Fox dodged back out of sight, for he wanted to find out all he could about the stranger 
before the stranger saw him. Reddy sat down behind a big stump and rubbed his eyes. He could hardly believe what he saw. There at the top of the tall maple tree, stripping the branches of their bark and eating it, was the stranger, sure enough. He was big, much bigger than Reddy. Could he be a relative of Happy Jack Squirrel? He didn't look a bit not the least little bit like Happy Jack. And he moved slowly, very slowly indeed, while Happy Jack and his cousins moved quickly. Reddy decided that the stranger could not be related to Happy Jack. The longer Reddy looked, the more he was puzzled. Also, Reddy began to feel a little bit jealous. You see... All the little meadow people and forest folk are afraid of Reddy Fox. But this stranger was so big that Reddy began to feel something very like fear in his own heart. The Merry Little Breezes had told the news to Jimmy Skunk and then hurried over the green meadows, telling everyone they met of the stranger in the green forest. Billy Mink... Little Joe Otter, Johnny Chuck, Peter Rabbit, Happy Jack Squirrel, Danny Meadow Mouse, Striped Chipmunk, Old Mr. Toad Grandfather Frog, Sammy Jay, Blackie the Crow, and each, as soon as they heard the news, started for the green forest to welcome the newcomer. Even Grandfather Frog left his beloved big green lily pad and started for the green forest. So it was that when the stranger finally decided that he had eaten enough bark for his breakfast and climbed slowly down the tall maple, he found all the little meadow people and forest folks sitting in a big circle waiting for him. The stranger was anything but handsome, but his size filled them with respect. The nearer he got to the ground, the bigger he looked. Down he came, and Reddy Fox, noting how slow and clumsy he was in his movements, decided that there was nothing to fear. If the stranger was slow and clumsy in the tree, He was clumsier still on the ground. His eyes were small, his coat was rough, long and almost black. His legs were short and stout, his tail was rather short and broad. Altogether, he was anything but handsome. But when the little meadow people and forest folks saw his huge front teeth, They regarded him with greater respect than ever, all but Reddy Fox. Reddy strutted out in front of him. Who are you? he demanded. The stranger paid no attention to Reddy Fox. What business do you have in our green forest? demanded Reddy, showing all his teeth. The stranger just grunted and appeared not to see Reddy Fox. Reddy swelled himself out until every hair stood on end, and he looked twice as big as he really is. He strutted back and forth in front of the stranger. Don't you know that I am afraid of nothing and nobody? snarled Reddy Fox. The stranger refused to give him so much as a glance. He just grunted and kept right on about his business. All the little meadow people and forest folks began to giggle and then to laugh. Reddy knew that they were laughing at him and he grew very angry. For no one likes to be laughed at, least of all Reddy Fox. Look at you, taunted Reddy. You're afraid to fight. I bet you're afraid of Danny Meadow Mouse. 
Still, the stranger just grunted and paid no further attention to Reddy Fox. Now, with all his boasting, Reddy Fox had kept at a safe distance from the stranger. Happy Jack Squirrel had noticed this. If you're so brave, why don't you drive him out, Reddy Fox? Asked Happy Jack, skipping behind a tree. You don't dare to. Reddy turned and glared at Happy Jack. I am not afraid, he shouted. I am not afraid of anything or anybody. But though he spoke so bravely, it was noticed that he went no nearer to the stranger. Now it happened that that morning, Bowser the Hound took it into his head to take a walk in the green forest. Blackie the Crow, sitting on the tip top of a big pine, was the first to see him coming. From pure love of mischief, Blackie waited until Bowser was close to the circle around the stranger. Then he gave the alarm. Here's Bowser the Hound! Run! screamed Blackie the Crow. Then he laughed so that he had to hold his sides to see the fright down below. Reddy Fox forgot that he was afraid of nothing and nobody. He was the first one out of sight, running so fast that his feet seemed hardly to touch the ground. Peter Rabbit turned a back somersault and suddenly remembered that he had important business down on the green meadows. Johnny Chuck dodged into a convenient hole. Billy Mink ran into a hollow tree Striped Chipmunk hid in an old stump. Happy Jack Squirrel climbed the nearest tree. In a twinkling, the stranger was alone, facing Bowser the Hound. Bowser stopped and looked at the stranger in sheer surprise. Then the hair on the back of his neck stood on end and he growled a deep growl. Still, the stranger did not run. Bowser didn't know just what to make of it. Never before had he had such an experience. Could it be that the stranger was not afraid of him? Bowser walked around the stranger growling. As he walked, the stranger turned, so as always to face him. It was perplexing and very provoking. It really seemed as if the stranger had no fear of him. Woof, 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 cried Bowser the Hound in his deepest voice and sprang at the stranger. Then something happened. So surprising that Blackie the Crow lost his balance on the top of the pine where he was watching. The instant that Bowser sprang, the stranger rolled himself into a tight, round ball, and out of the long hair of his coat sprang hundreds of sharp little yellow-white spears. The stranger looked for all the world like a huge black and yellow chestnut burr. Bowser the Hound was as surprised as Blackie the Crow. He stopped short and his eyes looked as if they would pop out of his head. He looked so puzzled and so funny that Happy Jack Squirrel laughed out loud. The stranger did not move. Bowser backed away and began to circle around again, sniffing and snuffing. Once in a while he barked, but still the stranger did not move. For all the signs of life he made, he might in truth have been a giant chestnut burr. Bowser sat down and looked at him. Then he walked around to the other side and sat down. What a strange thing, thought Bowser. What a very strange thing. Bowser took a step nearer. Then he took another step. Nothing 
happened. Finally, Bowser reached out and with his nose, gently touched the prickly ball. Slap! The stranger's tail struck Bowser full in the face. Bowser yelped and rolled over and over on the ground. Sticking in his lips were a dozen sharp little spears, and Bowser could not get them out. Every time he touched them, he yelped. Finally, he gave up and started for home with his tail between his legs, and with every step, he yelped more. When he had disappeared and his yelps grew quieter, the stranger unrolled. The sharp little spears disappeared in the long hair of his coat, and, just as if nothing at all had happened, the stranger walked slowly over to the tall maple tree and began to climb it. And this is how Prickly Porky the Porcupine came to the green forest and won the respect and admiration of all the little meadow people and forest folks, including Reddy Fox. Since that day, no one has tried to meddle with Prickly Porky or his business. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.